friends and welcome back to our homestead today i'm in the kitchen because i'm about to do some long-term food preservation and in this project my husband usually helps me because it's easier to do with two people and i'll show you why a little bit a little bit later so today i'm going to be storing away some very very basic white rice not brown rice brown rice does not store well because it's very oily and it goes rancid quickly in a couple of months it's no longer good but white rice and you can pick your favorite rice can be stored for a very long time as long as it has the proper conditions it's away from any moisture minimal to no oxygen no critters no light no heat it likes very safe environment and it will last for a very very long time some literature says that you can store away rice for 20 to 25 years i've never stored it for that long but i've done it for seven years and it's just as good as the day when we stored it away okay so there are many reasons why people store away food right and i'm not talking about you know the doomsday prepping which you know some people do it for that reason as well but i like to store away food because just a year ago this rice had a very different price than what it is today okay so um just to help out financially uh, to my family i like to store away some staple foods that i know we're going to be eating that my family does eat never store away anything that you will not eat you're just wasting your money so store away foods that you know you're going to be eating and they are going to be safe to be, to be put away so let me show you the things we're going to be doing and the little aid that I'm going to be using to keep the bugs away. That's right. Keep the bugs away. So let me show you how we're going to do it. And I love to use five gallon buckets that I get from either uh, tractor supply. They sell them or Lowe's one year. I got it from Lowe's and I love to use this gamma lids. Okay, because the circle ring will go on tightly. I can't do it personally. I always ask my husband. And then this spins very nicely and nicely and tight and it protects from moisture or it protects from bugs. According to the law, the regulation of food preservation and food safety, there's a, a acceptable amount, you see my air quotes, acceptable amounts of bugs to be present in the dried goods. This is why you should always sift your flour when you're baking. Not just to add air and make the fluffy dough, but also make sure that there are no bugs in it, okay? Just a side note. So, also I like to use Mylar bags and they come in different shapes and sizes. So this is the one gallon, one gallon Mylar bag and you can use those or you can buy one of these gigantic ones i have a whole pile of them this one will fit the entire five gallon bucket it will line the entire five gallon bucket but here's an issue with that you could preserve lots and lots of rice or or grain or beans in one of these really really large bags that will take up the entire bucket however unless you have a family of 25 it will take you a while to go through that bucket but you just cut it and opened and you expose everything to air and now you have to use it up quicker but if you use the smaller bags okay and it's only one gallon you fill up several of them and you put into this bucket all right and then you take one out whenever you need it you open it and you use it and the rest of these bags stay filled inside the bucket for future use now, there are also disadvantages to that because once these bags are filled with rice or beans or other things, they become of a shape of a, like a boxy shape, I should say. And then it's not easy to fit many, many bags in here, only a few. So there are disadvantages to that. As if you used a big gigantic bag, you can fit a whole lot more in here. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Okay, so, um, what else do I like to use? And I have a little surprise that I love to uh, put into all of my preservation bags. And that is my friends, what? A bay leaf. I love to use bay leaves. Here's one. Ah, oh, it smells so good. I use them for cooking all the time, but I also like to use them for, um, for food preservation to prevent bugs. See, 
bay leaves have a natural bitter aroma and that bitter aroma is something to keep the bugs at bay okay it's going to keep the bugs away because the bugs don't like that aroma so when i preserve rice when I preserve grain or beans, dry goods, I like to throw them in the bag as well. All right, that's very, very helpful. I once met an older Italian uh, lady and she said that they have a summer home and they have a winter home. You know, here in New England, we have the, the uh, people who spend summers here in New England and winters in Florida. And she said when they leave their place of residence for several months, she takes bay leaves and she puts them in all of the drawers in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in their closets, in her closed um, um, drawers to keep the bugs away because bugs don't like bay leaf. So friends, go and get yourself some bay leaves because they're very, very useful in food preservation. To assist you remove oxygen, I like to use oxygen absorbers and they sell them in different shapes a small oxygen absorber or a large one and i have here in a jar a large ones so when they arrived they came in um in a bag just like this sealed bag with no oxygen it's literally very very tight uh bag once i open it it goes shoo, or it opens up and all the oxygen goes in and now you have to protect these little packets from oxygen otherwise they'll be used up before you even have a chance to put them into your food preservation, right? So what I like to do is I will take, I take a jar with a tight lid, I put them in here and I cover them up and I hold them in here. And then as I am working on my project, I take one out or two out and I keep closing this jar to protect them from too, too much of oxygen exposure. All right, that's what we like to do. Now, they, like I said, they come in different sizes. And there is some formulas that some homesteaders like to use. How many oxygen absorber packets per bag? I eyeball it. Honestly, I really eyeball it. So for example, for this, for this one gallon um, bag, I use one large, one of these large ones, or a couple of small ones. That's what I like to do. Okay, now how do I seal them? There's, there's an importance of sealing them and removing oxygen. So to remove oxygen, we use a vacuum cleaner. I'm not kidding, a vacuum cleaner. And we attach this attachment, you know, for like, for tight spaces when you need to use it. But to even help with that, because it's still a lot of, um, a lot of space open here. My husband MacGyvered a little device where he took this um, attachment to the vacuum cleaner, put a metal straw and just duct tape the whole thing so it's only a tiny little bit of space exposed. And we're gonna attach it to the hose of the vacuum cleaner and we're gonna be turning it on and actually removing that extra air, extra air in the bag before we seal it. And how do we seal it? How do we seal the bag? You need heat. And this is what we use, you know, hair, curler and this is a hair straightener uh hot iron whatever you want to call it and this is what we use to actually turning it hot making it hot and sealing the edge sealing the edge of the bag just like this okay and it actually seals it all right so i'm going to show you the process and we always then put them all in the bucket as well and these buckets are a food grade buckets bpa free so, uh, if you don't want to purchase the buckets at the store, you can always attempt to find them at bakeries um, or, or um, big box stores where they have, they usually use them for frosting. And often they actually square with the lid that's tight lid and they're also gonna be food safe, food safe. So this is exactly, this is a food grade BPA buckets and that's what I like to use. So let's, start preserving some food and um i may turn off the sound just because it's a little noisy and the camera picks up all the noise so i'm gonna um turn off the sound but i'm we're gonna show you how we do it from point a to actually point putting this away in a cold storage
make uh, white rice for a long-term storage. Now, you don't have to store it for 25 years and forget about it. You can use it and rotating by replacing it with new product, with new rice. I love to always put down the year that we put it away and what's in the bucket. I always label, label the bucket, so that's how we like to do it. So this five gallon bucket fits 25 pounds of rice, easily 25 pounds of rice if you use them in one of those big bags. However, if you're going to be using smaller bags, it will fit a whole lot less because it's not going to be very ergonomically uh, placed in the bucket. That's just what happens. You can always try to use a tote, like one of those plastic, but the lids have to be extremely, extremely tight so the water and the moisture don't get in. Okay, so that's how we're storing away rice. I'm also going to be storing away some white flour today and I will show you how I'm going to do that. Now, white rice will be stored for a very long time. Now, the white flour will not. It will be last me probably about a year, but trust me, we bake so much in this house, so we're gonna go through it very, very quickly. I just wanna make sure that it's protected from anything that might like to get in into the flour. Now, you've noticed that I put some bay leaf into my rice, but I did not put it into my flour because I don't want it to mix in and then accidentally get missed in the flour and get baked with. We don't want that. So I did not put any bay leaf in here. And I did put two oxygen absorbers into this bag with the white flour just to help a little bit extra. Now, how do you know if your oxygen absorber is still good? Well, if you touch the packet, it should be soft to touch or the beads should be moving along. You should hear them, you know, moving along. If the packet is hard, like firm, hard, that's it, it's used up its oxygen absorption properties and it's no longer good. So toss it, toss it, it's no longer good. But this is how I protect my oxygen absorbers, like this in the, in the jar. And if anything, it sucks up all the oxygen in here and the lid gets nice and tight and I have to pry it open. So this is how we store it, store it along. One little word of caution when you're going to be using vacuum cleaner to suck up, remove that extra air. You don't want to overfill the bag because you're going to be start sucking up all the rice or the flour. This is why my bags are not overly filled. And if anything, I had more extra space on top. Okay. Also why I, I'll show you why I like to leave a little space on top. Hold on a second. Uh, let me open it. So see how these extra and I only seal the top. Next time I can reuse this bag again. I'm just going to cut the top off where I sealed it with heat and I'm going to be utilizing it again. So this is why we leave plenty of space. So when we're putting the vacuum cleaner with the straw, we're actually not sucking up all that flour because otherwise you wasted all of that. Okay. And we can reuse these bags again. So friends, I hope you don't fall into panic and fear. Okay. I hope to spread a little bit of encouragement and wisdom. Okay. We all do things to protect our families, to feed our families and to be an alert to see what's going on and be aware of the prices or any other financial or political or social environment that we are facing today in our society. So friends, don't get discouraged, but instead be encouraged to food, put some food away. Okay. Foods that you will love foods that will be nourishing to you. Okay. That's going to fill your belly with good, strong calories to keep you going. So friends be encouraged and try something new.